Hello everyone, I'm Mark Sargent and this is my take on the attack on Pearl Harbor, otherwise known as the Battle of Pearl Harbor that happened uh, before the United States entered the World War II back in the 40s. And <clears throat> this one kind of means quite a bit to me because it's one of those bigger picture conspiracies. Now a lot of people, because it's so old, you know, don't think of it as a conspiracy. We're talking you know, several generations ago. But for me, it was indicative of how the greater good works and how choices are made that cannot be left up to the general public. So with that, let's get into it. Uh, what I'm going to do is, as before, I'm going to read the first couple paragraphs of the wiki entry on this, uh, maybe skim through it a little bit. The battle isn't as important as the motivation. So let's just get right to it, shall we? Uh, the attack on Pearl Harbor, also known as the Battle of Pearl Harbor, uh, the Hawaii Operation, or Operation AI by the Japanese Imperial General Headquarters, and Operation Z during planning, was a surprise military strike by the Imperial Japanese Navy against the United States Naval Base at Pearl Harbor in the territory of Hawaii, uh, because it wasn't a state yet, on the morning of December 7th, 1941, the attack led to the United States entry into World War II. Uh, Japan intended the attack as a preventative action to keep the U.S. Pacific Fleet from interfering with military actions the Empire of Japan planned in Southeast Asia against overseas territories in the United Kingdom, the Netherlands, and the United States. Over the next seven hours, there were coordinated Japanese attacks on the U.S.-held Philippines, Guam, and Wake Island, and on the British Empire of Mal Mala. Mel Malai, Singapore, and Hong Kong. The attack commenced at 7.48 a.m. Hawaiian time. The base was attacked by 353 Imperial Japanese fighter planes, bombers, and torpedo planes in two waves launched from six aircraft carriers. All eight U.S. Navy battleships were damaged with four sunk. All but the Arizona were later raised and six were returned to service and went on to fight the war. The Japanese also sank or damaged three cruisers, three destroyers, an anti-aircraft training ship, and one mine layer. 188 U.S. aircraft were destroyed, 2,403 Americans were killed, and 1,178 were wounded. Important base installations such as the power station, the shipyard, maintenance of fuel and torpedo storage facilities, as well as the submarine piers and headquarters buildings, also home of the intelligence section, section were not attacked. Japanese losses were light, 29 aircraft and 5 midget submarines lost, and 64 servicemen killed. One Japanese sailor, uh, Kazuo Sakamaki, was captured. The attack came as a profound shock to the American people and led directly to the American entry into World War II, both uh, in the Pacific and European theaters. The following day, December 8th, the United States declared war on Japan. Domestic support for non-interventionism, which had been fading since the fall of France in 1940, disappeared. Clandestine support of the United Kingdom, uh, known as the Neutrality Patrol, was replaced by active alliance. Subsequent operations by the United States prompted Germany and Italy to declare war on the United States on December 11th, which was reciprocated by the United States the same day. From the 1950s, several uh, writers allege that parties high in the U.S. and British governments knew of the attack in advance and may have let it happen or even encouraged it with the aim of bringing the United States into war. However, this advanced knowledge conspiracy theory is rejected by mainstream historians. Uh, there were numerous historical precedents for unannounced military action by Japan. However, the lack of any formal warning, particularly while negotiations were still apparently ongoing, led Franklin Delano Roosevelt to proclaim December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. Because the attack happened without the declaration of war and without explicit warning, the attack on Pearl Harbor was judged uh, by the Tokyo trials to be a war crime. That is the official statement. And, yeah, there's a lot that goes into this as far as... And we, we might cover a, a little bit <clears throat> on why... On how the attack happened, you know, what, what, what ships were hit first and what ships were sunk in what order. And, uh, you know, how, what planes attacked what airfields. And if you want, you can watch the highly stylized version. Um, uh, Pearl Harbor, I think Michael Bay directed that one with Ben Affleck and a few other guys. 
it's an okay movie, I suppose. You know, you got to be into Pearl Harbor. Uh, one, it was, you know, it's a dated piece, obviously, the early 1940s in the United States, uh, particularly Hawaii before it was a state. But there's a bigger picture here. And that was what they were talking about right here, you know, that, that several people thought that we knew about this attack that was happening in advance. And I think it goes way, way further than that, which was, <clears throat> and it's the one, the only conspiracy is I'll actually challenge people and I'll say, what would you have done in if you ran the country in that case? Because you got to remember, it's not about the attack on Pearl Harbor. That's not the, the you know, that was just, you know, a, a, a knee-jerk reaction. Once Pearl Harbor is attacked, the United States is going to enter the war. What was interesting was what happened before this attack, which was Germany was just running, you know, Nazi Germany was running ripshod over Europe and had taken basically the whole thing. Um, you know, all of Europe had been taken at that point. They were sending V-2 rockets and cruise missiles, early cruise missiles, look it up yourself, um, into Great Britain, and they were in the process of finishing off Russia. Plain and simple. Once they took Russia, the rest was history. They, they knew this. And Russia was such a big continent that, yeah, they were having a, a, a tough time with the winters. But it was only, it was only a matter of resources and uh, munitions. They were going to take them. Uh, it was, it was no, there was no, was no stopping them. Germany had advanced weaponry, and we won't go into exactly how they got advanced rep weaponry, but they were way ahead of the game. I mean, they had designed... Not only the first jet plane and the first uh, ballistic missiles that were guided, uh, the first cruise missiles, their, their tanks were state of the way better than anybody's. Uh, their planes at the time were very, very good. Uh, they invented the first assault rifle. Everything they had was top of the line. Their troops were very, very good. And they had basically won the war. Let, let's call it what it is. They had wrapped everything up <clears throat> in a tidy little bow. And they were, uh, you know, all they had to do was finish off Russia. Once they took Moscow, that was it. And once you got Moscow, you got the Soviet Union. And then they go over to Great Britain. They'll take those guys out. And then they're going to look at the United States. But what a lot of people don't remember back then, and I, I know it's different now, you know, here we are 80 something years later, which was. <sighs> And you, you would have known this if you had watched movies or television shows like Band of Brothers or Saving Private Ryan, where there were a lot of German citizens that were already in the United States, a lot of a lot of settlers, people that, that immigrated from Germany, especially up in the Wisconsin, Minnesota area, parts of Oregon, anywhere up in the north. Um, the, the German families were pretty well entrenched in the United States. There were a lot of German people here, and I'm saying this from experience because my family is heavily German. I came, my, my early um, uh, ancestors came from uh, uh, Germany and went before it was even Germany. In fact, I've got a piece of paper that my great-great-grandfather had to renounce the king of Prussia, not Russia, but Prussia, P-R-U-S-S-I-A, when he came over here because it wasn't even Germany yet. And uh, my family, my, my great-grandmother, she spoke only German, and, and they all lived up in uh, Cochrane, Wisconsin. And it was the Stock family, S-T-A-A-K, with the double dots above the A. And so, yeah, there was a lot of German people here. So Germany during World War II, this, the United States was the crown jewel. It was the ultimate goal, which was, you know, if you're, if you're looking to world domination, think about it. It makes perfect sense. You take out Russia, you know, your arch rival on land. Uh, then you take out uh, the United Kingdom. And then you offer an alliance to the United States. How, how hard would it have been? You run dual flags. There's been science fiction books written on this, you know, the alternate history of what would have happened. They wanted to take the United States without firing a shot, and they could have done so very easily because we didn't know what was going on over there. So you run over here, you, 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 you say, oh, you know, we're, we've already taken Europe. We're building a new thing, and we're gonna, we want to alliance ourselves with America. You fly dual flags for a while, United States on top and the Nazi flag below. And then slowly but surely, you, you, know, you switch places with it. United States flag goes below, and then it's not on the flagpole at all. And then this place becomes just another territory of Nazi Germany. That was the plan. That's what they were going to do. And they had this thing locked up. There was there was no there was no gain around it. it this was going to happen. It, this was uh, uh, their destiny in history was to take the world, and with the United States as the new Germany. Oh, can you imagine? You know, before the oil fields are really exploited, they would have had all the resources. 
once they take the United States and take out, you know, and, and hold off, um, you know, take Great Britain and, and Moscow, then it's just a matter of time. Then you develop your atomic weapons program and then you can do war on the cheap. Anybody that, that you uh, deem as not worthy to, you know, to, to mingle with your new empire, you wipe out. And they had plans for them all. You know, they would have gone after Africa. They would have gone after India, uh, everybody in the Asian uh, sector. And that would have been that would have been it. Uh, by they would have had the whole world. But I don't know, 1970s, 1980s at the at the latest. It would have taken a little bit of time, you know, to expand that sort of empire. But no one could have fought them. Ch China wasn't industrialized. Yeah, they had infantry, but that's all they had. What's infantry going to do against air power? Or better yet, some refined ballistic missiles. Uh, what's India going to do against Germany? In fact, was there an opponent to take them out? And Knowing all this in advance, you got to remember. All, all I'm saying to you, this is this is not new new information. We knew this back in the day. Um, Franklin Delano Roosevelt and all the chiefs of staff, they knew this going in, uh, that they were going to be ousted without even firing a shot. How difficult would that have been for uh, a congressman or a senator or anyone in the, in the chief halls of power? Let, let, we won't get into the Illuminati or the Bilderbergs or Rothschilds or any of those guys. Whoever started this war. They ran into a real problem. Let's let's go into the secondary aspect real quick, which was uh, if you if you you know you believe in the higher authority, they set Germany loose on the world, and then they couldn't control them. And they knew it's like holy smokes, if Germany actually takes the world, we may not be able to get what we want out of them because the German power structure they didn't really share power with people. And I have a funny feeling that it didn't matter how much money you had. Uh, you were going to have a tough time trying to keep Germany from, you know, taking the whole thing and then locking it all down, you know, with an iron grip. So here you are, the United States, and maybe influenced by higher powers, you know, maybe the royal family of, of um, the United Kingdom was involved, you know, whatever surviving royal families were left around the world. Uh, you know, maybe the, you know, the northern families in Norway, the Netherlands, maybe somewhere up there. You have a meeting, and it's like, okay, what do we do? How do we stop Germany? What can we do? The only country which literally had not been touched up until that point was the United States. They had gone through World War One, weren't real fond of the idea. They were basically mercenaries during World War One. But the the public, it was so far removed. It's not like now where where news is instant and gets transmitted in all places at the same time. News was tough to get, and so they didn't know anything about the you know the the Holocaust or you know concentration camps or or what how Germany had basically scorched the earth and 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 taken out a lot of places. You know they were ruthless with the whole Blitzkrieg campaign. So what do you do? How do you stop Germany? And again, you know, they had to make some tough choices, but once they figured out they were allied with Japan, then you had some options to do. You know, you, there's some, some, some things you could pull off. Uh, one of the biggest was, and, and look this up yourself, was that Japan was getting a lot of its oil, its petroleum products uh, from the United States. And the United States basically turned off the spigot to Japan, and it's like, oh, you know, in, you know, a, a newly blossoming industrialized nation like Japan, and they turned off the oil, no gasoline. What do you, what do you do there? So they were, they were on the clock as soon as the United States did that, and the United States opened the door for this to happen. Now Germany, the last thing they wanted to do, of course, you know. <laughs> let's not let's not kid ourselves yeah they were allied with japan until the war was over but just since japan uh was asian you know they were not going to be integrated into the german empire they were going to eventually go toe-to-toe -to -toe with germany and maybe they knew this who knows but the only thing you could do uh if you're in the united states you, you're never going to be able to debate your way into the war. The public did not want a war. But what we do know from hi, you know from history many, many, many times over is human beings, especially men, but women sometimes too, uh, they will fight for revenge. We were brought up on it it's from schoolyard all the way up until you know modern day. Uh, that is, we will fight for revenge. If somebody hits you or hits somebody you know, you're going to want to revenge them. And... All of a sudden, Pearl Harbor, this this pristine paradise, which wasn't even really a not much of a tourist attraction yet, gets pounded by you know a, 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 what seemed to be an unscripted attack by the Japanese Navy. You know, six carriers, hundreds of planes just blew that place apart. 
for no apparent reason, whatever it was, it didn't matter because people, you know, that, that got your, your, your blood boiling, your bloodlust up. And then th that's how the attack was going to happen. And you're thinking, okay, well, where are you going with this? Where I'm going with this is think of the alternative. If Pearl Harbor isn't attacked, if it isn't attacked, Germany takes the world. And if you're in the seats of power in the United States back then, you know this for an absolute fact that nothing has stopped them so far. Europe didn't stop them. The Soviet Union, and they were they were the they were the ones you wanted the real heroes of World War II was the Soviet Union. They lost millions of soldiers badly in this massive infantry campaign. Look up the the Battle of Stalingrad. Look up the Battle of Leningrad. Look what the heck the the Russians had to do. The Russians relocated entire cities big cities he's like let's, let's relocate you know houston that that's the equivalent of what what russia was doing just to win this war russia was has been our ally for a long long time and they were getting the tar beat out of them and we thought at one point that russia could take them and they couldn't and england was was doing a valiant stand but england's not a, a, not a military power like that and the, in fact the only thing that saved england uh, from from getting overrun was the english channel the the fact that they were an island that was the only thing and and germany didn't want to commit the rest of their navy and do an amphibious assault let's just bomb them from distance let's just throw in cruise missiles and and ballistic missiles the v2s look those up if you get a chance britain was just hanging on by its teeth uh you know good for them of course the only people that could step in to fight this and it was no it was no given no there was no given by any chance was the united states so, and that was the last thing Germany wanted for, for this. They wanted to take the United States without firing a shot. As long as the United States didn't enter the war, Germany had this thing. It was over. The war was over. And then, for some apparent reason, that we still don't know to this day, Pearl Harbor was attacked, blown away, you know, by the by the Japanese Navy. And instantly, I mean instantly, look up the, um, in fact, I can scroll through some of this stuff for you real quick. Uh, diplomatic background, hang on one second. Military planning, objectives, approach and attack. I'm trying to get to the point. Japanese declaration of war. Trying to get the response here. Second wave composition, Japanese losses, possible third wave, which never happened. Wonder why that didn't happen. They could have, they could have, they could turn that that island into just ashes and they didn't they held back and we still don't know exactly why uh in fact yeah yamamoto later regretted nagumo's decision to withdraw and categorically categorically stated it had been a great mistake not to order the third strike they could have they could have completely crippled the united states uh pacific fleet and they didn't and you want gotta wonder why um ships lost or damaged blah 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 the aftermath um strategic implications present day they don't really go into it law non-fiction historical alternate history oh interesting well what i'm getting at is if pearl harbor isn't attacked germany wins the war plain and simple so i put that question to you what would you be willing to do to make sure the united states wins the uh you know the the germany doesn't win the war forget about the united states you know becoming this a super powerful empire which they you know they did because of this war uh, what would you do to keep germany from taking the entire world um would you be willing to sacrifice a single military base and we'll go into this in other in other segments you know uh, you know like the mexican american war or the um spanish american war things that are sacrificed don't don't for a second think that you can't put a price on human life you absolutely can't it happens all the time especially in the military uh losses are calculated and in this case yeah they lost 2400 men 2400 sailors and another i don't know what it was 1700 1800 wounded uh is that worth 2400 you sacrifice 2400 men you rally the united states a million men I immediately enlisted the very next day and actually it probably should have been more than that because they had to and then you know is that worth keeping germany from putting their flag on the entire world some people would say no but i you know but they'd be kidding themselves of course it is in fact you could sacrifice ten thousand men and it'd still be worth it twenty thousand how in fact there isn't a number i don't think at that point that you could put out there to uh that would because remember the people that the people in power franklin delano roosevelt the chief of staff they were all going to lose their jobs and probably be executed once germany got over there eventually or or 
put put out to pasture and you know they're just never going to see him again oh we'll put you in a mansion and you know you you don't get to talk to anybody you don't your, your power men relinquish power very very slowly and they you know drag their feet the entire way of doing it um and that's what happened here the the men in power didn't want to lose their power you know you're you're the chief of staff you're the head of the navy you're head of the army you don't want to lose your job without at least firing a shot so what do you do are you willing to sacrifice a base uh, I will get into this, of course, in other segments, but uh, you know, if anyone has any, any doubt, look up the Alamo, look up the battleship Maine, look at, you know, these are, these are sacrifices that are made to bait or inspire others, not just necessarily military forces, but civilians, look at, you know, to wage war against another country because uh, it's so tough to just talk about it. It's so tough to say, look, Germany is coming at us. How do you convince the public of this? You couldn't. Well, not to mention you have a lot of German citizens, but the Japanese citizenry of the United States, not that heavy. So what happens there? You know, now you have this foreign enemy. Most people never even seen a Japanese person before. And you, you, Japanese attacks. Oh, Japan's allied with Germany. We're going to war against Japan. Therefore, we are now going to, like, to war against Germany. It worked. Um, the the plan worked and i again i challenge any of you to to come up with an alternative if you guys any of you out there think there's a better way of stopping germany uh a faster way uh, as well you know it, it uh, you find me one email it to me at msargent23 at comcast.net email me your solution other than to have a major base get hit and you can't really hit them in the united states because there weren't that many in the united states i mean yeah you could hit something on the east coast maybe but that have to be from the german side and you know it also wouldn't make sense if you, you decide to hit los angeles or san francisco back then because it's like okay why didn't they hit hawaii on the way to los angeles or san francisco uh, the carrier group making it all the way to um made all the way to los angeles from japan that's a that's a quite a feat i mean yeah they could have made it but you know it would have been way way away from home and there would have been islands to fall back to so it was the perfect target and they hit it and immediately america got into the war and remember it was not a slam bu uh, slam dunk but what happened was it distracted germany enough because once they saw it, it as like you know they had to spin their heads around because they were concentrating on russia it's like ah crap we got to finish off russia now because if we don't we're gonna you'll know, be we're gonna be fighting a two-front war we're gonna be fighting russia on the one side and america on the united the other side and that's exactly what happened and it took this massive you know it took d-day it took the the greatest assault of all time everybody was in on it you know russia and america and great britain and and any allies that could be willing to to lend support it took the rest of the world to take down germany and uh, you, you know, people say, well, you're really hyping up Germany much. And you're like, well, look, I'm, I'm quite a bit German. And it was uh, very intriguing to see. I'm, I've always been intrigued by large military forces and how they dominate. Uh, no different than the Roman Empire, if you ever watched the, um, the, the first 20 minutes of the movie Gladiator uh, with Russell Crowe. Uh, you know how how the Roman Empire you know just laid siege and and basically they figured out they they boiled down war to a system and this system worked and that's what Germany had done they had boiled the war down to a system and it worked as long as everybody was did what they were supposed to do you know the, their opponents uh, they, they, everything was going to work out fine and I'm not going to say that America cheated because all's fair in love and war but what they did do was was something that germany didn't expect and that was they were willing to sacrifice willing to bait one of their allies into the fight and in doing so created this this weird situation where all of a sudden it's like oh now germany was by default even though germany didn't fire a shot on the united states at the time uh they they were now you know declared war on each other because they had to because japan got involved because the united states forced japan into it so um yeah that pretty much sums it up i think i don't know if there's any other little things to go after uh other than to you know look at the alternate history and uh look at the movies and, and television shows that have touched on alternate history everyone knows what would have happened uh, if, if uh, Pearl Harbor wasn't attacked, would you have sacrificed your own naval base? That's the question I put to you. And we'll, I'll be putting this question to you with, in, other, in other wars, but in World War II, this was the big one. Uh, it's not just about America entering the war and winning the war. Now, a side note to that, which was 
because the um, Russia had taken the brunt of, of the of the fighting, they were the one that got beat up the most. England was the second most beat up. Um, the United States had this wonderful advantage because they had water on both sides, the Atlantic and Pacific, of launching their fleets, and they were never ever attacked directly. So after the war was over, when when a huge chunk, you know, so after the war is over, you've got Russia. List list all the countries that got beat up. All of Europe, Russia, Great Britain, Japan. Uh, you know they were they were all smoldering you know after this thing was over the only ones that weren't were the united states and so they were in a perfect position uh talk about you know betting on something and coming up big betting on the right horse you know it, having pearl harbor attack was the best thing that america could have done i mean it was almost like somebody looked back in a time machine and or looked forward in a time machine and says oh look if you enter the war here, if you could figure out a way to the end to enter the war, you for you will for a while becomes the most most powerful uh, empire on on the world, and that's that's what happens. So, you know, tell me tell me I'm wrong, tell me it wasn't a conspiracy, tell me that it was just a it was just a coincidence that uh, that we allowed that you know that attack happened just at the right time. If it even if it even happened a year later. Uh, United States wouldn't be able to wouldn't be able to muster forces fast enough. If all had, all Japan had to do was keep their carriers and the, where they needed them and wait for the signal from Germany, and then they they could have taken it. Again, of course, you know Japan would have been you know Germany's slaves, or or worse probably. You know they would have been exiled. Germany you know Germany might have used them for other things, but I've got a funny feeling they wouldn't have. They were kind of. Uh, Germany was kind of harsh about that sort of stuff. So anyway, that's my question to you. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this one. Thank you, thank you for um, becoming a member. And we will uh, talk to you guys next time. <laughs>